up to my channel have you noticed that i've got my hair done that's why i kind of took a bit of time off youtube because i realized how messy i actually look and my hair was just not cooperating but i finally had it done so now we're back to uploading and hopefully next week my schedule will be back to normal i'm not working monday so i can upload for you guys so that being said today's video it's a spooky one so if you know me you know how obsessed i am with sam and colby and the gang like cora jake everyone um they stayed in this hotel called the stanley hotel i really want to stay here as well just it looks amazing and i want to see if all this haunting stuff is real um so today i'm going to be looking into the stanley hotel it's history it's hauntings and we're just going to see what we can find really so if you didn't know the stanley hotel you might recognize it, it from somewhere because it, it this film this film this hotel actually inspired the film the shining um you know red rum red rum um but yeah it, it inspired the shining after it that it stayed there and then loads of things started happening so that's why he wrote the shining got it on my phone and we're gonna just look into it so this is in colorado i believe so yeah the Rocky, yeah, the Rocky Mountains are home to a hotel that's widely considered one of the most haunted places in America, and it has ties to a renowned, renowned horror film, which I just said. The Stanley Hotel, Colorado, is said to be haunted by several different ghosts, from past owners to children and even a couple pe of pets. Along with its haunted reputation, um. The hotel also inspired Stephen King to write The Shining, one of his most popular novels that was adapted into a 1980s film starring Jack Nicholson. Now, a bit into the history of it. The Stanley Hotel was built by an inventor, Freeland Oscar Stanley, who moved out to Colorado hoping that the fresh air and plentiful sunlight will relieve his tuberculosis, I believe that says. Sorry if I'm pronouncing anything wrong. When he arrived in 1903, he was weak and underweight, but after just one season, hotel staff says his health was restored. The hotel says Stanley was overjoyed that he vowed to return each summer and end up building the hotel to bring a level of sophistication into the region. The Stanley Hotel opened in 1909. Just think, that was a long time ago. Think of all the history, all the deaths that happened there. Stanley died in 1940 at the age of 91. At least he had a good life. But his spirit is said to still roam the hotel. Specifically, staff says he's often spotted in the hotel's billiard room and bar. Stanley's wife, Flora, has also reportedly been spotted in the hotel and is known to tickle the keys of a piano. Hopefully the piano's not ticklish. Um, and there's a photo of like a mirror room here, which a mirror is said to be a portal for the ghost, mirrors and water. Um, and a mirror, if they're across from each other, it is said to be a portal for the ghosts and everything. Which in this hotel, it has like 10 or so mirrors in like on the staircase facing each other. So it's just weird to think. Another ghost that has been said to show up is former housekeeper of the hotel, Elizabeth Wilson aka mrs wilson i've heard about this person her story is quite sad really tall guys say wilson was lighting lanterns in room 217 which is allegedly the most haunted room by the way when she was seriously injured in an explosion she survived the blast but passed away years later now it seems wilson is a regular in room 217 guest report items being moved luggage being packed up and lights going off and on it also seems wilson is rather conservative Guys say she's not a fan of unmarried couples. People who aren't married have reported feeling a cold presence between them while in bed. So she's like quite old fashioned. She believes that he should be married before getting into bed, basically. Um, and yeah, I've heard that she moves things. So she likes it clean. Also, I'm shortly I'm going to get into this story of a little girl. And hers is quite weird in a way, but cute and scary so, yeah the spirits aren't limited to adults tall guys say the ghost of a child with autism also roams the ground and is known to play with the hair of guests staff says the boy named billy is drawn to people who work with people with autism or are familiar with the development disorder 
which is quite cute really he was playing with hair i know it would be scary if you just feel like your hair getting played with but yeah i feel sorry for him on the fourth floor guess i've also reported hearing children running around laughing and playing i know why this is because back in the day children and women stayed on this floor guys say that's where nannies and the kids yeah they watch would spend much of their time back in the day not all of the hotels pur purported get ghosts and two legs there's pet there's a pet cemetery aka like the film i guess on the grounds that guys say is the final resting place of some of the owner's animals staff says the ghosts of a cat and dog have been seen roaming around and that's quite sad to be honest Oh, I think this is when I've gotten to a ghost call. No, I don't think it mentions this ghost on here, but I'll give you some other facts that I know. Guys end their tours in a cave system below the hotel where staff says there's a higher than average concentration of limestone and quartz, which is believed to draw some spirits to the property. So this ghost isn't actually on this list, but I'm going to talk about a ghost called Lucy. Lucy, she was a little girl, um, there's tunnels under the hotel and she was like a stowaway so she like hid there until one day she got caught and got thrown out and she froze to death. Um, so she said to close doors behind guests and if you put a lollipop, like say to the lollipop, face up, apparently it, she moves it around. But to be honest, I think her closing doors, it's quite cute. She might be closing the doors so the guests don't freeze to death like she does like people are scared but i think it's quite cute but on the salmon corby video corey one of the guys he took a photo and you could see it was obviously undergroundish and you could see a little girl and that is believed to be the ghost lucy so now a bit onto how the hotel inspired stephen king during a recent appearance on The View, Stephen King explained that he was a, living in a boulder working on the stand when he and his wife took a weekend off from the kids. We ended up staying at a place called the Stanley Hotel, said King. It was their last day of the season. Everybody was leaving and nobody was coming in. And we said, can we check in? An employee told King that they could stay if they could pay cash because the hotel had already sent its credit receipts back to Denver. King happened to have the money. We were the only people in that hotel and the windows were slid outside and the rooms were all empty. Legend has it that during King's stay in room 217, he had a lucid nightmare about his young son being chased around the hotel. Guys say the author jerked out of bed, went outside to smoke a cigarette and that's when he started to lay the groundwork for The Shining. Over the years, many people have claimed to have captured the ghost of the hotel on camera. One instance was in 2016, during tours of the hotel guides also share some of the photos that they say show the spirits. It's cool how a hotel can inspire like a film just from a dream. Like 217 is allegedly the most haunted room. Also, the ones that Sam and Corby stayed in, I can't remember what hotel number it was. It was at the end of a, it was at the end of the corridor on floor four. 42 something i think it was but there's allegedly a cowboy that is like in the closet and for girls when they're laying in bed it apparently kisses the forehead and for guys it just doesn't do anything um but that's scary like a cowboy and they kept hearing knocks and everything so but yeah. now i'm gonna list the most haunted places in the hotel which some of them i've already been mentioned but some of them haven't um so the first one is obviously room 217, perhaps the most famous spot in the Stanley Hotel. This is where horror writer Stephen King spent the night and got his inspiration for his 1977 bestseller, The Shining. You can soak up some Rocky Mountain views that King got when he stayed there and added amenity. The room has a library of King novels. When King and his wife arrived at the hotel... Yeah, I've already read that, read that, read that. Um, so yeah, this is a room that is haunted by Elizabeth Wilson who was the hotel's housekeeper who died during, I mean, during the storm in 1911. She was injured in an explosion. She didn't die then, she died a few years later. Um, she survived though, broke her ankles and her spirit seems to be a regular in the room. And then obviously, yeah. One of the biggest myths about the room is that it's never available. This is not true. You can actually book it and stay there if you dare. 
Let's get this to 50 likes, guys, and I'll stay in room 217. Jokes, I don't know if I can choose the room, but I definitely want to stay here. I mean, I'd be happy with any room, I'd... Because, obviously, there's other haunted places to go in the hotel. Next one is the Vortex. This is the mirrors on the landing. From an architectural standpoint, the staircase between floors in the hotel's main guest house is a stunner, but the area has also been dubbed the Vortex, a natural spiral of energy. It, it's also known as the rapid transit system for ghosts that are known to haunt the hotel. The next one, the concert hall. There's a lot of paranormal hubbub, whatever that means, said to be happening in this famed concert hall. Paul, when, oh yeah, Paul's another ghost by the way, one of the well-known ghosts haunting the Stanley was a jack of all trades around the hotel. Among his duties, enforcing 11pm curfew at the hotel. Um, so if you go past 11pm, you get like a cold energy. Um, which could be why guests and workers here get out being out late at night. The area is also a favourite spot for hotel founder Flora Stanley's ghost to play a piano. A few of Paul's antics. A construction worker reported he felt Paul nudge him while he was standing on the floors. And tall groups of the Stanley ghost tour have reported he flickered a flashlight for them. Another, oh yeah, this is about Lucy. Another ghost known to wander the concert hall is Lucy, who quite possibly was a runaway or homeless woman, well, girl, who found refuge in the hall. She entertains the re requests of ghost hunters, often communicating with her flashing lights. Stanley historians, however, aren't quite sure about her pre-death connection to the hotel. Room 401. More than a century ago, the entire fourth floor was a cavernous attic. It's where female employees, children and nannies stayed. Now today's guests will report hearing children running around, laughing, giggling and playing. Plus, there's a famous closet that tends to open and shut on its own in this room. I found the room that I stayed in. It was 428, that's Sam and Corby, Corey and Jake stayed in. Cause this is a, the next haunted room. Really, you get a badge of bravery for staying in any room on the fourth floor, but bonus points if you can book room 428. Guests have reported hearing footsteps above them, which they actually did and furniture moving about in the closet they did. But that's physically impossible given the slope of the roof, tall guys say. The real haunt is in this room though is a friendly cowboy who appears at the corner of the bed. Just imagine waking up and seeing a cowboy at your bed. That'd be scary. Next place, the grand staircase. From antique mirrors to, and portraits, there's plenty to distract the eye on the grand staircase at the Stanley. But it could also be a popular passageway for the hotel resident ghost. In 2016, a visitor from Houston snapped some photos on the grand staircase and upon returning home and reviewing them, spotted an apparatus at the top of the staircase. The thing is, he doesn't remember anybody else being on the staircase at the time he was taking the photographs. The ghost image of a woman is at the top of the stairs. Like That is so weird to think like, you don't see it at the time, then you look back at the photos and you're like, damn, someone else was there with me. The last one on the list is the underground caves. If you go on the 75 minute night spirit tour of at the Stanley, you don't have to be a hotel guest to get on it, but you should book in advance. Your tour will come to an eerie halt at the, at the end with a visit to the underground cave system. Workers moved about the hotel through the caves in the early days, so it makes sense this is a popular haunt. Skeptics will pass off this haunt as breezes from the historic piping and ventilation systems, but beneath the hotel is a higher than average concentration of limestone and quartz, which some ghost hunters believe help capture energy at the property yeah let me know your thoughts on what i've read out if you believe it's true like i'm and it's like a bit of an, a skeptic like that's why i want to go to these places to kind of like there's two of my list now. well there's actually more than two of my list now but definitely other videos anyway the stanley hotel and the queen mary ship um i want to go to both of them do some paranormal investigation to see if it is real for myself but yeah so anyway gonna conclude today's video i hope you enjoyed please like comment below and subscribe it's free just subscribe um follow my instagram i have two instagrams that you can follow one more but link to youtube they're my main one emily underscore malone 2001 and emily maloney yt follow my tiktok as well which is emily underscore maloney 2001 and please all take care of yourselves bye be the fan, that's what they call me I promise that you'll never be lonely